day set up for you. Because it's a setup. When you allow that pain now to begin to make you turn from your goodness and begin to do the opposite, they cut you. It will instantly bring a curse on you. Amen? Amen. Do you know when the Lord Jesus Christ was arrested? He didn't commit any sin. He came to set humanity free. He was arrested. The Bible says he opened not his mouth. He was silent. Amen. Go to 27. Jesus said, but I say unto you, which here, love your enemies. You know, let me show you this. You can be angry. I'll tell you the gospel truth. God, God gets angry. The Holy Spirit can be angry. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me now? Yes, but, in the midst of that anger, God still loves you. Amen. Amen. It's, it's very hard to understand, but it's the truth. Now, this nature, I have in, I've converted it. I converted that nature from God. I sat down for years and I converted that nature. I said, Lord, I will never permit my anger to turn to hatred. I will never. I have vowed my anger against anything, any man or any woman. I will get angry if you mess up. What will make me angry with anybody is when you don't, when you are there attacking the gospel. I don't get angry over whatever. If you like, go and do whatever you like. It's between you and God. But when you attack the gospel in my presence, I will get angry against you. Or you don't do your work to prosper the gospel the way you ought to. Amen? Amen. Now, when you do that, you, you have not committed any sin. You are fighting for the righteous cause of God. Amen. But when people begin to speak good of you, oh, you are the best. They worship you like God. Oh, you are this. Oh, you are that. Oh, you are that. You watch your life. Yes, yes. It's because you are. You are demonic forces are operating with you. Amen. Amen. But when those that you love, either your family or at work or something, you need and you pray, you fast for them, and they turn against you, it shows that you are afflicting the kingdom of the devil. Oh, that's, what, that's what Jesus said. He said, do, do good to them which hate you. But when they do that, and you now got angry, and say, this person, I'm going to shoot him. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You are worse than an infidel. You like with some of God. Because they have turned your love, which is original. You have allowed them to turn it into a hatred. Go to that 28, my dear. Look at what he now said. Empower them that curse you. <laughs> Empower them. Keep them back. Oh, I know you. It is well for you. It is good. It is good. Empower them that curse you and pray for them that despitefully use you. How many of you know that many of us ministers are despitefully used? We release anointing, we pray, we do this, doors open for people. You can hardly see people who will remember the man of God and say, ah, this man do deserve to be blessed. And this is the way the, li the devil lied to them. The devil lied to Christians that if you can take an offering, even people say, it, if you take an offering and you put it inside the offering box, they will say, I gave you the money. I hear, I hear people say, I gave you, I came with $50 and I gave you $50. So that's right. God doesn't exist again. It is human being you gave it to. And I don't blame you. I blame those false pastors who carry church money and, and do all kinds of rubbish with it. Church money, the Bible gave us how it ought to be spent in the book of Leviticus. Amen. 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 There are certain things that should accrue to the pastor or to the preacher. And there are certain things that must accrue to the work of God. Yes. Amen. You 
come in eating God's money and think the work is going to go. So otherwise, I'm saying that don't misappropriate the income, the offerings. Amen? Amen. Now, look at uh, 30. He said, Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away from thy goods, ask them not again. How many of you have had this gospel before? If you have had it before, it was a long time ago. But I started to bring it to you now to hear. Because compassion is dead in the body of Christ. And God wants us to bring that compassion. Everybody seems to be selfish now. It is me and my children. God bless me. Me and my house. God just bless me. Me and my house. Somebody can buy five cars. And one person is struggling to even buy a bicycle. And yet, he or she look at that person. Eh, it's your business. And they're in the same church. It brings a curse. You must not let the, 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 the less privilege among you. Amen. Says the Lord. Amen. And everybody wants to treat them the same. Amen. In the house of God. Amen. No man is better than another person. Amen. It is the same blood. It is the same deliverance you got that they got. He said, and as you would, that men should do unto you, do ye also to them likewise. How do you want men to do unto you? Do you want men to sit down at the table and be discussing you evil? I'm asking no. the judge a question. Do you know that whatsoever you do to a man, on the contrary of what God says, can bring a curse? Let me tell you also about forgiveness. Forgiveness is for your own good. Amen. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean that you are weak. Yes. It's for your own good. Yes. When you can forgive, you have yes. left the battle for God. Amen. Moses said, Arise, O Lord, let your enemies scatter. Mm -hmm. When you forgive somebody, I say, I forgive you in Jesus' name. Amen. And I love you. You have left the battle in the hand of God now. He yes. takes decision. Yes. Yes. And when God takes, when God fights for you, you will beat your enemy. Yes. I rather prefer God to fight for me than me is for me fighting nonsense. Yes. Forgive everyone that is not to you. If one cause is to be broken. Amen. 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 So what is the key word there? It's that one. Somebody say that one. Amen. Read it, everybody. I say you that men should give unto you, do ye also to them likewise. See, as I said earlier, woe means curse. The key that destroys the yoke of any curse, I want you to write that statement down. The key that destroys the yoke of a curse, the key that destroys the yoke of a curse, the key that destroys the yoke of a curse. Write it down. I ask you to write something down. You are reading. You want to read your head? The key that destroys the yoke of the cross. What, I, what do I want you to see there? The cross has a yoke. Yeah. Amen? Amen? A cross has what? A yoke. And that yoke is what you should go after. Yeah. Anytime you are destroying a cross, go after the yoke of the cross. Are you learning? Amen. Are you learning? Amen. So when you go after the yoke of a cross, the cross is finished. It's completely destroyed. Yes. I don't care how many years that cross has been operated. Yes. What the Lord Jesus Christ did when he came was to go after two things only. He went after burden and he went after yokes. Jesus didn't do every of his ministration. He attacked burden and attacked yokes. Amen. Amen. So he carried an anointing that instantly made sure that the, the, the burden is removed and the yoke is broken. So when he destroyed the yoke, the yoke 
has no more, I mean, the cross itself has no more power to afflict people. And so Jesus was fulfilling the prophecy of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. We say it shall come on that day, which is what's referring to when Christ will come. It shall come on that day when the body shall be lifted off your shoulder and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. That statement is meant for cross destruction. It's for cross destruction. Amen? Amen. So the arrival of Christ is what destroyed crosses for everyone who received it. Praise God. Hallelujah. What do we mean by that? We mean that the power of God's life, and this is it. Um, Son, come in. This blossom. Pick it up. Your two hands. What is in your other hand? Candy. Love this candy. Yes. Good. Love this candy. Love this candy. Love this candy. Okay. You know, I want to understand something about God as a spirit. God is a spirit. He has a life. The life of God is different from the life of, of this. God is a spirit, but this spirit has life. It, it, it's different. The life of God and his power, they are interwoven. I want you to listen to me now. I'm teaching something very hard. The life that God, that make God God, God will not be God without his life. Amen? Amen. The God Almighty will never be God if he does, if he did not have the kind of life that he had. Amen? Amen. Just as uh, blood is in your body, so God also has a kind of life that is in him as a spirit. Amen? Amen? That life that is in God, it is actually what created everything. Amen. What God breathed into the nose of Adam was not life like life, life, life. He breathed into the nose of Adam his own. And that is what made Adam a living spirit. Amen. Like God. Amen. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. So where does life of God, which is divine now, amen? Somebody say divine life. Divine. It's higher than uh, spiritual life. Amen. It's higher than healthy life. Amen. It's higher than any kind of life. Amen. It's a special life that it is indestructible. And Satan knows this. I want you to listen, please. I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm saying. That life is in the blood that is called the liquid magnetic fire. When you say God is fire, God is fire. God, God is fire. But what made that fire is the blood. Amen. The blood of God in the spirit world is not a liquid like liquid. It's a living, invisible entity. Yes. Amen. And so when God releases it, it moves like fire. Hallelujah. It can destroy and it can build. Amen, Amen church. Amen. Now, So, that, when God made the body of Adam from the dust, he was lifeless. Amen? Amen. No life in him. God did not give Adam the life of goats, the life of dog, the life of animal, the life of bro. No. He gave Adam his own life. Amen. What made Adam to have dominion is the life of God that was breath in him. 
I was I got breath in. Do you remember what Job said? Job said, he said, the spirit of God has made me. The breath of the Almighty has given me life. So it is the breath of God that gives you life, but that life is not human life. If you don't understand me, if you don't understand, say amen. amen. The life of God is different from the life that ordinary people it's called divine life. Amen. Now, power of the Holy Spirit is derived from that life. Amen. That dynamic power of the Holy Spirit is gotten from the life of God. Amen. If there is no life of God, there will be no power. But more especially, it is that life of God that is called his manifold presence. Amen. When God is present, his life is manifold. Amen. Now, but this, this is the key. When God now breathes that life into the nose, which is the blood, into the nose of Adam, and Adam <laughs> rose, and carried, Adam is now carrying a divine life. Yes. Amen? Amen? He's carrying a divine blood. So with that divine, he now began to have dominion. Amen. He was the one that called elephant, elephant. Amen. Because of the life. Amen. You look at lion and say you, you shall become lion. Amen. You look at fish, you say you, you shall become fish. Amen. Everything he named them is dominion. Amen. And everything honor him. Not because he was Adam, but because he carried the divine life. Amen. Now, this is what the devil did. The devil saw that mankind has received the life of God. So he said, the only thing I will do is to poison that life. When I poison the life through sin, that life will no longer be called divine. It will now be called a perverted life. So it is that life that carried now curse instead of blessing. So man, you saw that the Bible says man was driven out of the glory and he was driven into the outer cross of it and then began to toil. He started toiling. Why? That life that is in him was the blessing but it has now turned into a curse. Does somebody get me? So my son is rich with the apostle. How is that blood that has perverted now the life that has been torn now? How can it be turned back into the original as truly divine life of God? God has to come down. No other way. God Himself has to what? Come down. you now uh, there are studies that have been made for years this is not something I got from anybody it is God that gave it to me years and years of studies and I think it's time to show you and you are blessed receiving it amen Have you seen Ezekiel 16? Amen. All right. Look at what the word says in verse 6. Please read. Verse 6. Can somebody read it to me, please? And when I passed by thee, when I passed by thee, I saw thee polluted. In thy I saw thee polluted. What does it mean? The blood now has been polluted. What is the word polluted? 
It's been buried. It's been defiled. Please wake up and answer me. It's been what? Defiled. It's called defiled blood. So that blood that God gave to Adam for him to have dominion was now a polluted blood. Yes, read up. I said unto thee, but and now because of my mercy, I say unto thee, when thou was in thy place, when you are inside that blood, live. live. Yeah. I said, I say, live and not die. Amen. 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 So what God is saying here is that I am going to come down. And when I come down, I will die. And when I die, I will rise again. And I will turn that polluted blood into a blood that is called dominion blood. Now, I want you to understand why everything a Christian does. And this is why the devil is trying to take it away from the church at the same time. Christians talk so much about the world. Let me say this to you. This word of God is not effective without the blood. Amen. When God spoke to me, as a prophet of God, God spoke to me very clearly. It's not that I read something and I said, no. God declared to me, I had it. He said, stay under the blood. For they will fight you. But nobody can fight the blood. Amen. So what God said meant was that if I stay under the blood, <coughs> everything that is fighting me will have to fight the life of God. Amen. And if they can fight the life of God, they are dead. Amen. Children of God, this is the last of the hours. And there is nothing that is going to be effective for any man on this earth except the blood of the Lamb. Do not wander down the blood of Jesus. Do not trample upon the blood of grace. Our rescue for this end time, the rescue of every mankind for this end time, is the power of the blood to me. Now, the blood, the efficacy of the blood, for the blood to be effective to break the cross, the blood has to be decreed. And this is it. I'll show you something. In demonology, we don't just say, I plead the blood. Because this is what I hear Chris say, I just, Lord, I just plead the blood. Of course, you can say, Lord, I cover myself the blood. But you must know why you are doing that. If you want to have a result, why do you cover yourself with the blood? Okay, I just cover myself with the blood so that Satan will not get me. Okay. If you want success, you go and paint your business with the blood and see in the next one week, if I stand to lie, help us here, in the next one week, your business will be, if you do it well, your business will be a mighty explosion. Everybody will be attracted to your business. The reason is because the life, every human being wants the life of God. Now, let me tell you something that wicked people do. In Africa, for instance, <coughs> what is it that brought carnivalism in Africa? How did how did mankind start eating another man? It's not because of the flesh. It's because of the blood. Now watch me. Man thought that if they can drink the blood of human being, they will be like God. Are you hearing me? That is what broke the body. It's not the flesh. It's the blood. Amen. Amen. There is so much authority and power in the blood, Amen. both in heaven and on earth, Amen. that man can't know. 
do you know that for human beings that carry flesh to be reconciled back to God who is his spirit, reconciliation is only by the blood. Reconciliation is not because you fasted. The devil wants to kill you when he's in a fast. He wants to kill you soul because your faith is on your fasting. And that is that is flesh. God will look at your fasting and say, Thank you. And you can take another 78 days. But when God sees the blood, God will stand on his throne and say, My baby, what do you want me to do? So? what God uses me to teach you. I empower you by the blood of Jesus. Amen. The efficacy of the blood is what destroys houses. Amen? Amen? The blood is applied by decree. You must, if you want to see results, you must apply the blood. Thank you. 